Hey guys, what's going on? It's Co-Shade, and uh, we're Arcane Duels. What's going on, Shark? How you doing? Doing fantastic, man. How you doing? Doing well. Pudding head. What's going on? Rocking out. It's the weekend. Cool, Love yeah. weekends. Yeah, right. So, um, I guess we have a card update. Not a card update. We have a dev diary, which we don't really have many updates for this week, actually. Um, a lot of focus and changes. Yeah, like we talked a lot about focusing on the Elementalist, and I know um, most of us here focused a ton on the Elementalist, but in general, uh, what we're finding is a lot of the games are seeing we don't need to make that many changes. We have some ideas of changes, but we're not re quite ready to implement that. Need more data. Um, so I guess when it comes to what we're doing right now is I want to talk about the card contest. Uh, where it's we're all creating a card, and we're at the point where the cards are done, um, in terms of voting, like uh, you know the the levels, things like that. But uh, I guess I just wanted to bring it up because we're gonna leave the polling open for another week, week and a half, and we'd love to get as many votes over the final look of the card. So when it comes yeah. to get your the, votes in, yeah, that's what basically I'm saying is we're looking to get your votes. And uh, so when it comes to these cards, I just want to show them off on this really quick in case you watch this on YouTube only. You know, you're not aware that maybe you don't even know there's a, a voting co card contest happening. But uh, here are the cards, and I want to talk about them really quick. And if any of these look like clearly imbalanced, uh, they are going to go through a series of playtesting uh, along with all the other cards we're doing. So don't vote it up based on just believing that it's the strongest card. Um, they will be changed probably. It'll probably be nerfed in a way that will upset you. Like vote on the concepts more than the um, the card power necessarily. Um, so we'll probably change like stats or mana cost or or the attack bar damage rather than the actual ability itself. Um, yep. Or rebalance. So I guess the first one. Uh, we we have a holy and dark creature, and it was voted on to be that, uh, and it was also voted on to be level five. And uh, there was a close third, and that is a flame type of thing. So what we're trying to do is incorporate a lot of flame stuff and also people's suggestions here. Um, so obviously it has a fire uh, type damage, flaming sword, makes sense. Um, but the big thing is flame immunity, is that this is a, a, something that a lot of people are saying, I'd be interested in a card like this. And what this creature does is it opens the gate of hell for free. Um, which a lot of players don't play Gate to Hell. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot of players maybe shoo away from playing demon creatures. So maybe this card would give you an incentive to start playing that Gate to Hell creature thing. And, you know, with the changes to Incomporeal, thank you for the feedback, uh, put in it. Uh, with the changes to Incomporeal, um, you know, maybe suddenly the pen, uh, pen, pentagram is actually usable. So maybe there's all sorts of options there. But uh, just so that we don't neglect the Holy, which I feel like a lot of this card does, this in particular one, we made it an Angel subtype. Uh, so we can combo with Angels. That sort of thing. Um, and the idea here is that it was an Angel that was on the Holy side, and then it betrayed him for Dark. By opening Gate to Hell. Um... Yeah, it's a, it's a community card, so you know we're not necessarily expecting it to be like something that's usable in how players maybe always do, but I think it's a cool concept. Um, they're all going to be Demon Angel, by the way, because I feel like those are the two subtypes that'll just benefit the most from this card, and it kind of goes with the theming that we're trying to do. So um, talking about the second... We have four options, by the way. The second one is just objects in the zone. Don't remove burns during upkeep. So, obviously, something like, I don't know, you cast a fireball, they get burned, you have this guy in there, suddenly they're just going to keep burning. It might make combustion good. Um, I mean, there's the obvious magma golem issue, where you Wait, could just... Is there an interaction there? Oh, yeah. Magma golem can punch between himself combustion, in the thing. No, between combustion and, and this angel? I believe so. I believe the, there is a... I would think the interaction would be you remove zero burns and do zero damage because don't you remove all the burns and then roll that many dice? I think I'd combustion? have to look it up. I think I'd have to look that up. <laughs> Obviously, 
we're probably going to want to make it with, with work with combustion, but <laughs> if we don't, I'm not going to be upset. It won't probably change anyone's book. So, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> this is nobody runs combustion as it is. Uh, sadly. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, Magma Golem books are good with this. Uh, Magma Golem's going to punch uh, the face. Stud. And then, you know, the... Uh, then this angel that isn't named can clearly hit him with a sword to get additional burns, and it can sort of just stack up from there. Uh, Elementalist would be paying 15 spellbook points for this, but I mean, no, no, if you're a fire, I mean, combustion. You know? Oh, okay. Elementalist could run combustion because then you could get extra damage out, right? Yeah, that's true. You're not counting on burns to do everything for you anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true there. Um, our third one. This is one that I think is the most voted one right now, and that is when this, when a creature act, when this creature, whatever its name is going to be, activates, you can add a burn marker to target creature for two mana. Pretty straightforward. As soon as it activates, or is that during its action? When this creature activates. So they have to be in that zone already. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a pretty cool card, and honestly, it's one of those. Um, I mean, it's a level five creature, so think on the level of uh, what Allendell. So, I mean, flying Aegis one, flame immunity, adds burns, pretty good. Yeah, shark bait is biased. <laughs> Some might say that's the best one. I'm just saying. I mean, obviously, a drama like Warlock really benefits from this um, because obviously you know, this is a demon. She could just add a burn to herself and then go in there and yeah. hit something and then get transferred later. I mean, uh, yeah, that, that as well. <laughs> uh, she's, she's flame immune, but, uh, oh, but, never mind. but I mean, she could add a burn to something and because a demon, she can heal one damage from attacking them. Uh, like there's automatic like abilities to sync up there, you know, some might say that's the best version. <laughs> it's currently the most voted version. So I think, should lose Aegis. That it's is bouncy. our last one. Our last one does lose Aegis. And this one is probably less... Less of the burn at focus here, but more of the Demon Angel. And that is, if your Mage is trained in Holy, you get Aegis 2, which is good. If your Mage, mage is trained in Dark, you just get the Vampiric trait. We're hoping those are equal. They may not be. But, um, you know, it's just kind of a good creature then. The armor went down to 1, keep in mind. Um... So yeah, I mean this probably less interesting than the other ones, but it's a four. Looking at that creature though, like she's clearly got two levels of armor on. <laughs> yeah, but it's all on fire. It's all I on mean, fire. If, you, if, yeah. if you if you look at like Valshala and <laughs> Samandriel, like okay. they don't have two levels of armor on. This this angel has two levels of armor on. I agree. Least. You should vote for an, a two level of armor, at least one. Realistically armored. <laughs> Realistically <laughs> armored. Uh, I would yeah. I would vote for increasing Silesius's armor to three I, because she looks oh, like she has three armor on. I could honestly see all the gre those angel creatures being two armor at least, but anyway, that's not what on. we're talking about. We anyway, have a war rabbit hole. The war creature level this four creature. Like the nigga. Uh, there's a lot of good feedback about this creature, so I feel like whatever we get out of him, he's going to be pretty fun to play. Uh, I'm going to make him a double-sided card. We're going to get two of these. <laughs> it's going to be one on one side, one on the other side, and you have to choose which one you're playing. playing. You have to have a card sleeve so that they don't know. You exceed yeah. it at some point to actually yeah, turn it over, <laughs> and it gets a, even more powerful. Um, like this is probably the most generic one. It's just a good creature. It's a level 4 creature. That is, it has infinite Man. defense because it has a tower shield here. Uh, solid armor, a lot of life. Uh, a really weak attack, but it has vigilant intercept. And um, I guess, solid. guess the idea here is that it can't really move that fast. Uh, if you can get both hits off, like attack, attack someone, go on guard, they attack back. You're going to get 6 dice around with that idea. Um, but He's just a good creature. I mean, honestly, tough minus three when guarding, so they can't, like, you know, try to push you out of the way or something. Um, I think it's worthy of this super heavy armor, has lots of arrows, that sort of thing. Um, that's probably the most, like, generic bland one we have. And I'm not saying bland is, is bad. I'm just saying it's more just, like, you know, it's, it's just that's a creature jank. that stands alone, you know? Um, yeah, it's a good, 
but uh, a rival to the Panzer Guard. For sure. Yeah, yeah, like one level up, right? Like it's one additional level, so you see it at that level, what it would look like. Um, next one, again, we have four. This one is mainly around using other troops to help out, uh, such as like little goblins, stuff like that. Maybe slingers are looking to get in position. Um, but basically, if a friendly creature can put a guard marker on, uh, they'd basically place it on this guy. And um, he does still have Vigilance, the weak attack. It's an 8-up defense infinite. But uh, the idea is that he can advance them forward using his giant shield and, I don't know, reflexes. Um, and again, Soldier Knight, that combos with a bunch of things. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you how, because you probably already know. Um, still, vigilant, still vigilant and still intercept? Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. He's pretty good. Our third one. Uh, this one is actually really interesting. Loses Vigilant. But when he's attacked, if he gets zero damage, he can gain a guard marker at, after the Counter-Strike step. So if he's not guarding already, because he chose to attack with his five die attack, um, and he gets attacked and he takes zero, he doesn't get a Counter-Strike. He immediately gains a, right. the guard marker after, so that the next attack that comes in, he'll do it. Right. And keep in mind, an eight up infinite defense. If he does get that defense, it counts as taking zero damage. Yep. Um, and there's also a number of protection spells he can do. He's just kind of a uh, really yeah. You could hit him with the. Uh, he he actually goes really well with um, what's it called? Uh, fortified position. Yep. Uh, Divine Protection. He has three armor. If you reduce the total amount of damage, that's pretty good. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do it if you just think about it. And again, his five die attack is, I think, because he loses that um, uh, Vigilance. It, it's or, suddenly is this more. just in my brain, or is there a spell that allows you to take damage for something? Is um, that a ro of a seer There or is something? a formation that allows you to spread out damage. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So I remember the formation, yeah. but I can remember there's something it's like else. It's like defending. Yeah. But you need to have... I thought um, you need to have the same type of creature. Or is it just soldiers? Well, I think it's what soldier means, right? Well, no, I didn't I know if it was the same one. type. I thought it was like same creature. I couldn't remember. Maybe it was. It's been a while. I'll have to look mm -hmm. back at it. No, it's form ranks. I know the name. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. specifics are anymore. Uh, regardless, this one has a lot of really interesting support abilities to use with it. And you'd probably want to use this as like make your main dude. Um, the last one here, again, no Vigilant, and this is just, he is supposed to, like, take his shield and be, like, the center focus of the zone, and because he sort of does that, and he's, like, sort of, like, uh, drawing all the fire, like, all your friendly soldier creatures either, you get, they gain elusive, and that allows them to retreat or advance safely. Um... So that's sort of the idea with him. He's mainly like a support creature, but also just very hardy. Um, There's some I, cool things you can do with it. He's kind of cool, you know? Um, yep. I mean, the idea is that if everyone else is guarding, I don't know, some mage, this guy guards and suddenly, like, it allows all the other creatures to move in tactically. It's kind of interesting. Um, and that's, that's the card contest. So, again, we're going to have this up for probably another week and a half. And we'd love to get as many votes as possible. Uh, which ones do you guys like? So form ranks works on any soldier. Very cool. Ah, and okay. What's cool. can you? How much damage can you transfer? That was one. One. So you. Well, I mean, you can. Yeah, you can transfer one of that damage to another soldier. So you don't. So if this guy had minimum. form, if if this guy was in four ranks, or in a form rank zone, yeah. and he would receive one damage. You can transfer it, and then he wouldn't have received any damage. I mean, combo that with, like, Glancing Blow or something. Yeah, Glancing you know? Blow. Good. could be done. Yeah. Anyway, as I said, if, if, like, five dice is too powerful, and you're voting just because of that, and it ends up being too strong, it'll probably be lowered. So, like, just think about more of the, the concept. It's mostly the abilities that know? we're looking for here in the concept, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So, cool. we're not actually making any card changes uh, this for this week, but we did want to not just go away, so let me go ahead and get 
Um, this out of the way, this out of the way. Yeah, we're gonna work on commentating a game that we, or a couple of them that we played. Uh, my face is gone. And did we want to do, um, what was I talking about? What did I want to do? We can get rid of everybody's face. Yeah, everyone's face is gone. People want to see the game instead. That is what's on the stream. Let me go ahead and share oh, this. Oh, our feedback focus. We also wanted to swap that out there at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me one second, guys. I'll share the screen with you guys. Thank you. And there you go. Cool, cool, cool. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yep. We good. So we just wanted to go over an Elementalist game really quick. So right now. A couple of them. I'm just going to start out. Yeah. Just We'll start at one pace while we talk here. Uh, right now, we're talking about the Elementalist being essentially done. And there are still things we want to work on. We do want to work on ice still. Um, we do still want games with, with the Elementalist. Um, but we're not thinking he needs many major changes. So when you're thinking about your games, like, and if, if there's anything that, first off, I guess, if there's anything that you think is absolutely broken that we totally Please need to change, send us data. Now is the time to, ch to send us that stuff. Because then we'll review it. If there are issues, we'll open it back up. Yep. Um, but for the most part, he's probably going to be this way until circumstances change. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have any caveats to that? No, not really. We just we need more data. But we're going to start focusing more heavily on Monk since we've gotten a lot of Elementalist data the last couple of weeks. So yep. it's time to start making sure everything's good to go. And then we start doing our promo push at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know ice is something that Putin has talked about. We need to work on still. I still think that the yeah. Drake we need more games on. Um, yeah, we want more. Definitely want more of the Drake. And in general, if you want to just play funky elementalists, that's totally fine too. Because I mean, obviously anything is acceptable. But we've seen mostly the cast the amulet, cast the pandemonium. Like we've seen a lot of those games, and we believe they're in a good place. Yep, we want to know what happens if... Can you break it in other ways? Because mm -hmm. if so, we need to know about it. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so this game here. Let's talk about this game here. This All is right. uh, Ferno playing uh, the Elementalist from the top left. This is a very typical game we've seen. And uh, I say that because Ferno's probably our best Elementalist player right now. Um, and we have Shark in the, the bottom right here playing the Force Master. Um... And I guess we just wanted to showcase this game just to be like, let's go over things that you might think is is too strong that maybe you haven't seen how it's countered. Or maybe it's just like us just, you know, telling you guys like these are pretty like very similar games of what everything we've seen so far. And uh, these are representative and why we think that he's in a good spot. Not all of them are going like this exactly yeah. but i mean the the close game nature of all of it so far has been pretty consistent yeah you want to talk about the amulet so I, one thing i noticed that has worked in every game i've done this which has been a lot recently is if you dissolve the amulet the uh elementalist i wouldn't say folds but it does derail a lot of most of their strategies and yeah, you could always run six of them as the Elementalist, but how much tempo are you losing while you do that? So right now, it's a lot of making the Elementalist use other methods by which to keep up, and he hasn't been able to do so when I see that happen. So I find it at least worth dissolving an amulet or two to see what happens and what he can do with it. The tactic has worked pretty well. Yeah, I mean, the, the amulet is five mana. And um, in general, you do get at least one use out of it, whereas your opponent dissolves it for five. Um, that being said, like, not being able to maintain it, I mean, basically, the Elementalist right now is really action-starved. Yep. And if you're constantly it, using yep. your Battleforge to recast this amulet, and your two other actions are going somewhere, it's tough to keep up with it. Yep. The other like thing is, like, if you're counting on that two mana, then it's not there... It can throw off a whole turn, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been a lot of instances where, like, uh, the the wind or the lightning... I'm sorry, not lightning. Stormfront Elemental. Like, they get cast as one of the first creatures. And once you've figured out, like, 
there's a lot of ways to kill them. They tend to actually die really quickly, and that can be a problem if I think if you're playing the amulet game. And it could be a problem, resolved. yeah, for sure. Because I won't say they're super weak because they're still fairly strong, but the ways to take them out aren't exactly um, secret tech. Yeah. There's yeah, quite right, a few ways not... you can do it, and there's quite a few of tools available to to basically anybody. Like you're not gonna have to pay triple out of school for for most things to do it. Mm -hmm. you, there are ways to do it, I guess, to do it so it's only paying double. And sometimes you have it in school, sometimes you don't. But I mean, if it's out of school and it's only double, then it's really not too bad to invest a couple points in being able to take those guys out for long enough if you need to. Yeah. And I but, no, I mean, be aware the pandemonium can also keep them going. So. Sorry, you were saying. Yeah, and I want to point out we have a fire glyph, uh, elemental drake here, and uh, this, I mean, uh, all the glyphs that you put on him are actually pretty good right now. Uh, maybe not air as much, but um, fire is really not quite nice. As effective, but yeah, because as long as you keep it active, you get a five die claw swipe, and like yeah. right now we're sort of looking at the drake as being this like build your own familiar kind of because of that glyph thing, and. Um, so far, a lot of players just ignore him. Like, they don't really yeah. go after him, which, I mean, taking out the Elementalist Fireglyph is actually pretty strong. It is. Um, it means you can't use it at all the rest of the game. Exactly, yeah, because it's gone. So it's like one of those things where, like, we're thinking it's fine right now because we haven't really seen anyone kill it, but we have seen the Elementalist, like, consistently get wrecked. Um, so I don't know. This is kind of like, and wrecked is probably too strong of a word. We've seen him get beaten a bunch. Yep. The Elementalist has not been dominating people every game. In yeah. fact, the, the, the last time I saw an Elementalist, it's been a little while since I've seen an Elementalist win a convincing game. Um, you know, there have been a lot of, games lot of are, close games now. I think I guess a lot lately. of the games that? where he loses, they're usually good games. Yeah, there's yeah. been a lot of close games now, which, basically both directions. Which, which that kind of tells want, me right? it's maybe just the Elementalist needing refinement in terms of like cards, you know, that sort of thing. Some of that, and it could also be some of it's the player skill with the with the the mage and stuff like that could too. Be, so yeah. it, it's a little bit of everything. But right now, we'd like more data before we make any changes. Um, so the the plan for this particular build, also the the force There's master, is I'm basically running there to try to derail his strategy, and I know his strategy revolves around the amulet of attunement. So I kept removing it with the mind's eye dissolve thing, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to keep making either cast it or you know, deal with it. <laughs> so I got rid of his uh, his mana source, and he's got 16 mana, which, interestingly enough, is actually not enough to cast what he wanted because he's of got the... six. Oh, sorry, I looked at 16, yeah. it's me. Oops. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got six was... mana, but yeah, it changes how you cha how you plan for the next turn. Yeah, so I mean, so far he's lost two. And it looks like you enchanted that uh, Drake with something. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can tell you what it is if you want, but... It's going to show up soon. Uh, but yeah, in general, it's like uh, this This book's built to derail strategies, and I think this one worked pretty well, actually. Uh, let's see if Ferno ends up casting another amulet, because I'm curious, because he has 12 mana now, and Sharks had 28. And um, I want to keep in mind that the Mage Bane is there. So it's sort of like Shark is really holding his cards here and mana just like waiting to be like for the right time to strike from the looks of it. Yep. And that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. We're just going to skip this planning phase because oh, some please, players ahead. take forever. Weird. <laughs> eh? Well, when your strategy is being derailed. Yeah. You know. I was talking about Shark, but, you know. So another amulet does come out for Ferno. Um, and this time the Mind's Eye isn't quite in the position to deal with that in the quick cast, so he's probably going to gonna get a free uh, free use out of it. Did he not get an activation from that? No, he did No, because they got it from the, the Battleforge. That's right, yeah. So he didn't get the that. activation. Yeah. So that's one of the drawbacks of using the Forge for that particular one. You only get a one mana benefit, basically, instead of a two. There's the acid like you would if you cast it yourself, but I mean, I guess it's worth the action, right? Yeah. I mean, it's free mana, you know. Right. So it looks like you get two damage and a crew there, so that takes care of all yep. of his armor. I asked all his armor. Yeah. You do a curse of servitude. All right. Yep. On the, uh, the Drake. What up, Farkas? How you doing? 
So he's able to decide if he wants to put two damage and use his Drake, or if he wants me to, or to attack a friendly guy. And I figured if he's gonna put attack spells on there, the idea is like, well, make him choose. It makes sense, yeah. So it, it's not an amazing card, but it's not bad. I mean, it worked. Thing, it right? did his job. If he chooses to attack a friendly, it'd have to be him, and he has a five die piercing one. That's pretty. Oh, nice. there's that too. Yeah. I wasn't even counting on him having to attack himself. I was just thinking, you know, he's not attacking me with whatever he's got attached to him. Okay, so this is a really or, common yeah. play here. Uh, so the rock golem you get for free because it's in the center zone here. Mm -hmm. And uh, there goes the ghoul rat with the seeking dispel. Wow. Seeking yep. dispel and elemental is very nice for now. Um, it's it's pretty expensive. But, uh, I mean, rock golem basically is for free. and When you kill it, it comes back for free, right? And that's one of those like spells that we've been seeing coupled with Altar of the Iron Guard. And we are still watching that closely, but we've seen players also play around that. Um, you know, probably solo mages probably suffer the worst. Which, if you have solo mage, you probably have some sort of elusive. And that's, again, if you're trying to kill the pandemonium. Yep. So, Shark takes a flame blast in the face, takes five damage off of seven dice. And the Drake takes two because he had to put the two on there to use him. That's pretty crazy. He also used the glyph there, right? Uh, seven dice. So the glyph is passive. It's a half two. Oh, right. That, he doesn't have to use it. It's That's passive, right. yeah. It is a passive bonus that he would get from that, which is pretty cool. It is. It's very good. And he had a hog die. So, yep. so he had extra dice. So, I mean, more investment, of course, the Hawkeye being on here. It just makes this Drake just such a, you know, a better target to kill. Yeah, we say that as I don't go around killing it, but <laughs> it could have worked. Uh, yeah, a lot of players just don't go after the Drake, honestly. Mm -hmm. and well, this particular others. book is not built to do that, but my other books definitely would have killed that Drake. I mean, honestly, the Pandemonium is a pretty big target here, so... yeah. That's true, too, because it's it. elemental, so it could come back. But it could come back and, what, take another glyph of yours? It would yep. have to, yeah. It would yeah. take another glyph. So, you know, it may not be a terrible one to go after there. Oh, Dense Fog. And this is another card that I think is pretty common. Um, Dense Fog is a Academy card that came out recently that kind of messes up how Obscured works. So they're trying to copy Obscured yeah. with this card, but it actually makes it more more powerful. Right, it is. Uh, so, I mean, this is something if you want to buy a free round, which clearly he's looking to do, um, you just cast this. It's five mana for a free round, but like at the same time, you're getting two glyphs out of it. Um, you're maybe getting some regenerate out of it. So it, it has its uses, I guess. Um, I know some players are taking four of these, and I haven't quite seen it be super successful, but like, it definitely feels like it's doing something. It can help yeah. in in batches of one or two to get you some tempo back, but it's about where I see its yeah. usefulness end. This is why Ferno was kind of doing this, right? Because he wants a tight elemental without fearing fearing you know, of anything, anything I could do to him. Yeah. yeah. And it uh, looks like I have the old version on this, or Ferno was taking the older version. Um, it's the old one. Yeah. I think you have to go in the uh, the updated erratic. Go to the yeah. Back. It'll say play test on it in the the book builder. Mm -hmm. I think it got stronger. In the updated, like it's it basically does the same. I mean, but... technically slightly stronger, yes, because the keywords, the yeah, ramification. exactly. Yeah, so sharks just kind of start saving up more mana here. Yep, this is one of those just waiting for it. Now he attacks his own guy because he didn't want to <laughs> take the damage. So again, I mean, that as far as I'm concerned, that has paid for itself already. That's Two damage funny. and an attack that got delayed. I'm fine with that. That's pretty funny, though. Yep. And on a turn where it was just meant to buy time, I mean, still, theoretically, I did something. Okay, let's wait for planning. All right. He puts on the leather. Yeah, and this is pretty typical for that for an elementalist. It's harder to pay for those higher level manner uh, armor stuff. So novice yep. is really common right now. 
And then I nuked the amulet again. And like, that amulet nuking you did, that's a really distinct tactic you're using. Like, a lot of people aren't taking that out. Nope, they are not. And I feel that they should be. Okay, flame blast. So he's going to attack me with another flame blast. Here's the force field. Except, uh, I got a force field, because I have a ton yes. of mana. Yeah, yeah, I mean, your mana is going to dwindle really fast here, but there it is, man. Yeah, yeah, it's going to. Okay. Uh, tight elemental gets yeah. Was, so again, we're just reviewing these games just to show kind of typical games, right? And what's well, I would like to this. point out though that um, Ferno has spent a grand total of uh, eighteen mana on creatures and has three of them out, and they are uh, four of them out, right? So he's saved twelve mana or sixteen mana on creatures. Yeah, two of the creatures are crap, but. When it comes to dealing with a Force Master's Force Field, two dice is all you need, right? That's so, true. so he is not in a bad position right now. Nope. Oh, no, uh, and of he, no, I don't think Natural so. Fury can also take out some of the. Yeah, Natural you Fury is also yeah. very good at Force Field removal, um, and uh, it's it's good to to see the tempo of the Elementalist in this one. Um, because as soon as he starts being able to get these three uh, level three creatures out for less than a turn of channeling, um, you you got to have a plan for dealing with that. Because I think if he had sat here and decided to just cast three, four tide elementals, um, you might have had some issues there. So, yeah, I mean, that's or or of... even iron golems, right? Uh, you can cast an iron golem for nine mana. And yeah, we we see people not dealing with the pandemonium and not being able to deal with the stuff that comes out because they didn't deal with the pandemonium. It snowballs, you know. So it can, yeah. That's why you need to be able to do something to it. But it... yeah, obviously, my something at this point is dot and messing with them as opposed to defeating either of the pandemonium or the uh, creatures. I attacked the amulet instead, the engine. Yep, and you know the engine is what cranks out creatures like this. Like, if he had not had to cast another amulet for for five mana, or four, because of Forge, um, and been able to gain four mana on the turns he didn't have the amulet active, like, that is eight mana. That's another Tide Elemental, right? Yep, that's true. So, getting rid of the amulet has really helped Shark's position in the game. Yeah. No, that's that's legit. I mean, not to mention a lot of your passive effects are constantly doing damage to him, so... Yeah, yeah you guys matter, are trading... Do you deal with those, or do you... Yeah, you're yeah. trading in a weird way, mana-wise, with that amulet, but at the same time, like... Oh, sorry. Uh, at the same time, though, it's like... You know, he's taking constant damage because of that. And there's another... It's damage. trading tempo for mana, basically. You and get another this mage point, on him. The, yep, the longer it goes, the more I'm going to keep messing with him. And he... So he, he dispels the Curse of Servitude, even, which... How Again, many... it's a yeah. trade I'm okay making. I mean, dispels are three spellbook points. That's yeah, it's not cheap, man. And the reason I put so many things out is I knew that going into this. So I'm like, the the way I'm gonna gain the advantage is by making him use those on things. Like it could be that he kills me before I can make you know run him out of his his and you know his way of stopping my my win here. But I think I can Ooh. outlast him. Oh yeah, that was so fun. So you're reducing his mana further by ca casting Mordox on the other side so, through mine. Yeah, Very this nice. is the that's the crippler right there. Is I put the yeah. Mord he's I've got four creatures out there, two of which are rock golems. So I put Mordox down, so he has to pay for all of them every round. He doesn't necessarily have to. I guess theoretically he could do. Um, if he doesn't pay upkeep for the rock golems, they can just keep infinitely respawning. But then he doesn't have p things to move during the turn with them. Yeah, that's true. So. It's a bit of a mixed bag, so it's not like inherently an easy decision either. That's harsh, man. I mean, so not only did you take his amulet, you also have his uh, his upkeep to deal with. Yeah, I I do think that especially if you're going to have an elementalist that's going to use the incorporeal guys, 
is already planning to pay upkeep, if you are hitting him with some more upkeep, um, I think we're going to see a return of Mordox Obelisk here. Yeah, Mordox is hard. Mordox really never was bad, except for the meta when it was still, you know, no creatures. But it's always helpful, even with two or three out there. That and the I think you're going to see it in Monks, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. I think so. Yeah, because that was the Rock Boulder meta. Yeah. We had for a while. Yep. All right, Forest Master moving in. Cast the Wall of Forest. Very nice. And then I enchanted him after that through the Mind's Eye. Yep. I Mind's wanted to. So good. Yep. Okay. Lots of choices for Ferno to make. And uh, with the incorporeal change, not that it really matters here. But, There's nothing uh, ethereal here. You know, you, you kind of see how strong this is. I mean, they're a little two dice golems, so if they get one or one damage, you should feel lucky there. This guy should get a damage or two. Gets two. It only has four life, so. Right. It's not too hard to take down the wall of force, but it did just delay them. Uh, it took four attacks. took, what, three, four attacks? Four so attacks. that's another uh, mana, charge yeah. on force field that I could save. Oh, yeah. So. Chains of Agony gets revealed. Yep. And I I did tell him we were on Voice at the time, so I told him he could, you know, not have to move both if he didn't want to. Yeah, so just heads to. up. Yeah. He's gonna thorns you. Yep, and you that's have... gonna be a good way to get rid of the force field yeah. stuff. So it has two tokens on it right now to block two of the attacks, and then three more will get through. Not to mention all these creatures are just Waiting for yep, you. Yep, just chilling like, there waiting. Zero armor, eh? Yep. Classic so. shot move. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get through this planning phase here. Yep. Oh, here yep. And I teleport myself away because he didn't quick cast to push me through there. That was a mistake. And so think, that was interesting. I think I've seen this. I think you go back because I think you guys talk it over and you're like, can we just make yeah. it so you don't make that mistake? Cause yeah, basically, yeah. what happened was it. we did we did talk yeah. about it. He yeah, had it is. there. You just decided not to quick cast. And I said, uh, you want to redo that? Cause, uh, yeah, normally yeah right. But yeah, technically I was ready to teleport away. The teleport actually didn't end up changing anything. I was going to teleport out of the zone that I got pushed into. And so, yep, there it is. Rolled about average. Uh, yeah, my for my first quick cast was to teleport myself two away anyway. There you go. Uh, he's going to take a damage from that. Two damage, man. Yeah. To move and cast something. So it's start the damage is starting to add up on him. I mean, I'm also not unscathed as it is. I've got 12 as well. He's got four corrodes on him. That's crazy. Yep. And I got the tar trap on me as well. Ah, uh, yeah. So tar trap with fire stream, that adds an additional die. Plus the active um, flame glyph, plus the hawkeye. And it looks like Force Master just dodges it. <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> so that. much. That's so funny. Yeah. All these creatures get into position here. I've already in that one time rolled more dodges with the Force Master's dodge defense than Scott ever has. Wow. Yep, wow. True. In the one time, I like it. <laughs> Funhead just doesn't roll those, man. He doesn't defend himself. Wow. Just, just garbage. <laughs> All that upkeep, man. That's so expensive. Yeah, he's on six mana a turn. Mm -hmm. The elemental staff. Uh, so if you're looking for a weapon that's cheap, especially now that we've taken out the sword, um, staff is probably one of your go-tos. Yep, four for four. Mm -hmm. And it's got a defense on it, so I mean, it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. I healed myself for quite a bit there. I mean, I, I take mage staff personally. But, um, Mage Death's you know. also good. But, I mean, it goes with your glyphs really well. And a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, I mean, this is 
this is a pretty typical game. So telekinetic burst. Uh, nice spell here. We're just dealing three damage to all these little dudes. And the stagger is what he's looking for, I think. Yep, the intent was the stagger. Um, and of course, the minor creatures can't actually act with staggers on. but They can know, move. Yeah, they can move. Um, but the tidal elemental... Maybe they can attack. Yeah, they can right. attack. Can't attack, can't um, the, the intent was to get a stagger on a couple of them. And I don't remember if it worked on two yeah. or not, but... I mean, I saving, I was already stuck there anyway. Saving two die per per burst is really nice per stagger. Yeah. And it looks like you get two staggers, which is nice. Yeah, I ended up killing the one. Like, oops, mm -hmm. he died. <laughs> Whoops. I, I don't mind. Yeah, the point was to save um, as many force field uh, things up as I could. And so the fewer he had to, you know, hit me with the. Uh, Theoretically, better chance I had of keeping that around. <laughs> mm, yeah. Looks like he's looking to elemental resonance you. Yeah. Uh, probably just with what? the with the staff. Yeah, the staff. Oh. Staff is element resonance. God, we have so, to change the name of I, the yeah. ability. <laughs> yeah. Curse the name. elemental staff. That's a weird name because it's not. It doesn't even have like an elemental ability, but it has elemental right. in the attack name. Right. Okay, so you can take a fire stream. So I want to take a note here, though. It's a three mana fire stream, so that's pretty legit for how much dice he's about to roll. So oh, yeah. the the drug with the fire glyph is really strong. Oh yeah, look at that damage because you do I mean, have he, a star yeah. trap on you too. Rolled poorly, yeah. but that's yeah. Okay. He rolled real poorly, but he rolled eight dice. Yeah, I guess what's really interesting about tar trap is uh, you're not restrained. So yep, not restrained. So your defenses, defense works just fine. Yeah, your defenses don't go down as as opposed to other times like Tanglevine. Yeah, there's been talk about making it a restrained effect, but I'm not sure it needs yeah, it. I it's mean, just annoying more than anything. I mean, dense fog. It really should just be obscured. Tar trap should really just say restrained. Um, I don't know. If everyone, it's, if it's anyone's listening, because of Academy. Yeah, if yeah. anyone's listening, yeah. they feel strongly about what that or one way or the other. Let us know because. I don't know, I don't really want to make the change, but at the same time, if there's like a bunch of people that are like, absolutely, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm curious, you know? There's that upkeep. Such a big moment here. And you actually have to pay upkeep on a newly reanimated guy, don't you? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you do, because you reanimate in the end step, and so the next yeah. upkeep is when he comes back. Yeah, right. No restraining tar trap. Okay, it it is a very unique card in that it's academy card. Yeah, I mean, well, it's unique, so you it's can you can keep them immobile and then you can move them away it from is you. It's good so already. good. Oh, so we're talking about instead of instead of instead of saying you just can't act, you're just restrained. Yeah, it's not a it's not an in addition to it's an, instead of instead of yeah. Sorry, basically, yeah, they can do. Actions, they just they're restrained. They can't move. Because yeah, it it almost does what restrain does, but like they just purposely don't use the keyword. Cause well, they added on the can't attack part because yeah. in academy you don't move and attack anyway. I mean, they don't even say attack; they just say non-spell action. I know. You know. I mean, you'd just be making a earth fire tangle vine at that point. Uh, but it does add uh, a flame die, that sort of thing. Okay, whatever. I, I almost never use it for the flame die. <laughs> I mean, Ferno's using it here, but I hear you. Yeah, no, he is. And, and you know, if you're going hey, to run with it, a Dremel League Warlock, you'll be using the I flame mean, plus, I, too. I know basically but... a lot of people just take this card because they're like, yeah, you use that in the enemy mage or a buddy, and you kind of just get free, free uh, turns. Yep. There's that force field going off. Yep. Keep in mind the force uh, field saved me a lot. Ooh, look at that force wave! Beautiful move here. Keep in mind, like the uh, furnace at 18 damage so far. Yep. That's stacking, man. And the mind's eye pulls you up. Yep, that was a <laughs> mana saving maneuver. In oh, fact. Look at that. That's great, actually. 
Yeah, that was like a mana saving is. maneuver because I'm starting to like we. You saw I was at a high level mana earlier, but I'm like as soon as the engagement starts, I'm gonna need to burn it to get the hell out of there. Yeah. So yeah, he brought me back with the teleport. Oh, but very nice. It still worked. Out. That's that's a sick spellbook cost teleport. It's worth it. I mean, look at this damage he's gonna get. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of players do like it as is. I know a lot of people don't like it as it is too. It just and it's a matter of too. perspective on whether you've just been recently, you know, had it used on you or not. Yeah. Is <laughs> that five die claw swipe? Yep. Yep. And right now the damage is actually looking pretty even. Looks like it's, it says, uh, looks like it says uh, slash instead of claw swipe. Is the yeah. yeah, it's a slash. It's supposed to be claw swipe. Uh, <laughs> eh, we don't change the attack Calling names. Calling you often. out, shark. <laughs> slash is the generic attack name, right? Probably. Or, or is there one? I don't know if there is one. Uh, I mean, may just have punch, I think. Or basic melee attack, that's right. Really should be called punch. I mean, don't some of them say It punch? should be called mage slap. Mage slap. <laughs> you have, it's a magical slap. It does <laughs> Is that upkeep cost? That upkeep was really keeping... Like, Furnace at six mana now, after upkeep. Like... Without that amulet, that's really keeping him down. And this pandemonium, it's basically getting these rock holes back up, but like it's that's not really it. doing that much. Yeah, you and know? so that was another way to neutralize it: is make it so he couldn't really, he couldn't cast it, cast anything from it. So it's, it's kind right. of interesting, right? If you killed the tide, tide elemental now, he wouldn't be able to reanimate it. Right. So of note, though, this book isn't a strictly mana denial book. It just happened to be that I had enough in here to make it so it derailed what he was trying to do. So, like, it's turn 12, and this pandemonium is out turn three, 2, I think. 3 or so, 4. Like, it's and then you just did 8 damage with a 9 damage on a Force, force nice. Hammer? Well, he's sitting there. He's he's unarmored. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, I'm going to go for the kill shot because he's unarmored, and 30, 30, 30, I'm going to run out of time if I don't kill him soon. So like, there's that teleport. Um, he's he's doing a retreat teleport. So he doesn't have to run away, but he's at thirty out of thirty-two. So let's, let's talk about this like uh, thirty-one pandemonium. Oh jeez, because he casts a spell. That's right. Eh. Okay. Because you were out of mana. Is that what just happened there? What was that? Looks like you tried to target him, but I'm guessing you were out of mana for your card. Oh yeah, I probably didn't math correctly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was. I remember thinking, I'm like, oh, I got enough mana to do one more thing. Oh wait, no, I don't. Never mind. I'm just gonna pull myself forward. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know where this game is going. He has a ghoul right on, so um, he looks like he uses the water. He glyph. can use the water glyph to heal, but then if he casts then something, he's dead. I think. So he's at thirty out of thirty-two. We're just gonna time twenty-five this. He takes a damage, putting him at thirty-one. And he needs one more damage to die. And it looks like he says GG. Saying there's probably no way out for him. Yeah. There wasn't. I I had a... He couldn't cast any spells. Like, it was it was basically over at that point. We just cast it. But it was a, it was a good match overall, man. Yeah. yeah. Even if he regens and then gets hit with a ghoul rod, he's dead. Right? Yeah, he could regen. He could do it. I mean, he couldn't cast a spell, no matter what he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... So let's talk about Pandemonium. It is turn 13. If it were regular spawn point, he would have had would have generated 12, 12 mana. Plus, most spawn points have a second additional generate. So let's just say maybe an additional 8. Maybe. Whatever that would have been. And honestly, I think we probably lost two rock golems. So it probably about evened out with a normal spawn point. I think it's 24. So he had what, like 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24? Yeah, right? he saved 24. Saved a total of 24? 
I mean, it's turn 13, so that would mean that it probably benefited a little bit more than a double spawn point. How much, um... Are you factoring it's... the full actions? Casting two? No, I'm not. And of course, okay. it doesn't actually so... cast the creatures themselves, which is additional mana. And most spawn points can generate three. Um... But, you know, like, yeah. there's not most, some of them can. So these are just the numbers we're seeing so to give you perspective on why we think it is where it is. So if it's sort of, yeah, disagreement. It's, so what's interesting, it's sort of evened out at the very end of this game. But he got a lot of those discounts earlier. It was a lot of upfront stuff, yeah. And that's why he was stronger in that earlier time. Sort of interesting to point out exactly how this is interacting. Uh, yeah. Granted, you save spellbook points, but you have true. to spend full actions. Also true. So I don't know. Um, so we have a ton of examples of games like this. Uh, we've, we've sort of like kind of beaten the Elementalist. And Shark's at 21. He's not exactly perfectly fine. No, if the game had kept going, if I couldn't find a way to finish him with the kill shot, I would have been probably, yeah. uh, probably dead quicker than he was. Like... It would have been a lot closer. Yeah, I don't Ferno's, know, man. I'm not sure I could have held out too much longer. Inferno's probably missing a, a remove curse in his book. It is a little. Well, he never had the mana for it. No, he, he hasn't had the mana for it. He never had the mana for it because he never dealt with the uh, Mordok's obelisk. So we probably should have taken out Rockle. Um, I, I would have just flown the Drake over there and hit it a couple times. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, don't, no, don't pay just... for the Rockle's. Let him keep reanimating for free while the Drake goes over there. Yeah, if the Drake had gone over there, I probably would have had to engage the Drake, but it would have changed how the tactics all worked out everywhere. Yeah, and while that's happening, you can save up mana by not paying upkeep on your yeah. rock golems. Yep. yep. You can try and run interference with the tide golem, and then you might be able to cast another one. Yep. 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 Or remove curse. Right. Yeah, that's probably, like, some way of staying alive is probably what he needed to do here. But, like, seems like it worked out pretty well. Yeah, it was a pretty good overall match. Sure and, and this is fairly typical of like the ending that we're seeing for a lot of Elementalist matches. Like, yeah, if they win, they're close. If they lose, they're close. They're generally good matches that come down to player skill, I think, than mage choice. Yeah, we've got a bunch of other games that we just posted, I think, yesterday of, mm -hmm. uh, of Elementalists. Like, Shark, I think Shark was playing not Elementalists, and I was playing an Elementalist. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's, that's how it's been for a little while now. kind of want to see more examples, um, I mean, I guess there is a, a part of us is worried he's a little bit too weak once you figure him out. But um, I think, honestly, like, we, we need a little bit more data to show where he's at perfectly. But we know that he's not super overpowered right now. Um... So yeah, I mean, I guess what we're I guess what we're gonna talk about now then is like shifting focus. Uh, yeah, so we do want to see anything that you think we haven't really given justice to on the elementalists. Like yeah, if there's something that you are aware of that you don't think we are. Let us know. Um, get get a replay in showcasing it. We will definitely be still watching all the replays. Um, but we are gonna try and transfer focus a little bit onto the monk this week um, yep. because the monk has far less data than the elementalist does and you know are we do we lose somebody no you're good nope okay all right i heard a weird noise um my headphones are wigging out um but we want to see the monk get some rigorous testing really yep we would like, like to get the same level of testing that we've had with the Elementals the last couple of weeks. One so. thing that I'm concerned about with the Monk is that the games actually will go too long with the Monk. Um, and we have some counterpoints to that, um, but I'd, just, I'd like to see how long the games are going, how much damage the Monk is doing, how much damage the Monk is receiving, how much keys being generated, all that stuff. Yeah, um, just if, to keep it online. If they're going longer than turn, probably 25 we're probably like if they're consistently going longer than that that's going to be an issue obviously but you know yeah. ideally 10 10 to 15 10 to 20 that's typically an average mage wars game um so yeah that's, that's a good point about game length for sure 
Uh, we are also a little worried about like excessive guarding, since the monk doesn't have a quick cast. Uh, it's a little tough for her to deal with like, you know, casting elusive and then attacking in, or you know, doing a force push and then attacking in. Um, you know, things like that. Well, have you found around that if you have some interesting tactics? Like, have you found something that works? We'd like to hear about it. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things that I think I think I just personally need to test more to really figure out if that's an issue or not. Oh um, yeah, I'm just wondering if anybody in the audience also has ideas. Yep, absolutely. Um, but yeah, Monk right now, we know the Fortify Resolve drop made her actually like killable. So it's just a matter now of figuring out um, can she draw games that too long, or can other mages draw games more easily against her? My feeling on the monk is that um, if you can do something similar to what Shark's Force Master did here and just derail the other person long enough, um, you'll win a longer game. Um, when it's down to mage versus mage, monk wins. In my opinion. Yeah, um, she's kind of supposed to in that sense. Because she is a solo mage, and she's one of the few solo mages that exist. You know? Um, that being said, Dragon Tail Sweep, that's a great way of dealing with cards. Um, it is true. That being said, uh, you know, if you're having troubles, like 1v1 versus Monk, range spells, super effective. Quick cast markers of all kinds. So the quick cast phase is your friend. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of our focus. Uh, after we're done with Monk, we're probably going to open up to a week of just promo. We're probably going to add a bunch of subtypes. Uh, yeah. Because, honestly, there's like tons of sub pr promos that need subtypes that don't exist. Um, like... You know, probably the Ankh should have, uh, you know, protection, things like that. And then we're probably going to have an open suggestion week, is my guess, where we're just going to, like, take a bunch of ideas that aren't card changes and really just cash over if they're reasonable or not. Uh, and then we'll probably be done. And, of course, we're going to have the card contest done as well. Yeah, yep. we'll need to test those cards as well. Yeah. Yep, we're uh, we're getting along here. I so. mean, we're, look, we're looking at you know the last few weeks of July, and uh, we're probably gonna see, um, you know, probably mid August is my guess when we'll be done with this. Then. Yep, that's pretty all. Awesome. That's, that's all I got. Yeah, so I guess that's uh, pretty much the dev tire for this week. Is any Sweet. any guests have any more comments or anything like that? No, nah, that's all I got. Okay. Um, put in last word. Uh, I want to see more frost. Ah, yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't want to see non elementalist frost. Um, because yeah. one thing I've been seeing is that the ice ring is not being taken at all. You know, we are, we are talking about so. changing the ice ring, and I think it is reasonable to make it, you know, more worthy, I guess, of how frost should work. Yeah, um, like, but other than that, yeah, I'm good. I, I don't want Frost to be bad. Honestly, I, I don't want Frost to be something where if you take it, people are like, I'm just going to win because you're using Frost. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, yeah. And that's, I guess, what we're doing. So uh, thanks, for everyone, for joining us for, I think, this is our sixth Dev Diary. Yeah. Um, I'm Koshid. We've got Puddin here. Yep. Shark, thank you again. And everyone that's watching us, everyone's giving us games. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you at the next dev diary. <laughs>